I almost killed my patient. Moments like these teach you lessons that never leave you. Through one of the scariest moments of my life and my nursing career, I learned a valuable lesson that changed the way that I practice nursing forever. But before I get into that, let's start at the beginning. I can still remember nearly every detail about that day. It started out as just a regular day. But when the day turned upside down, exact pieces of that shift are forever imprinted on my mind. Around 2 p.m., I was in a patient room with a nurse that had precepted me in orientation. She was walking me through the post-op steps because I was finally taking my first post-op patient completely on my own. It was a valve replacement and from the run through with my former preceptor, I felt like I knew just what to expect. And I remember feeling confident. When the patient arrived, everything seemed to be just as I expected. As my patient started to come out of anesthesia, he started bucking the vent, meaning he's ready to start breathing on his own. Yay, things are going just as planned. I kept thinking, I've got this. And the first thing I need to do is to start clearing all the IV lines out of the pumps. He wasn't even on any drips. This was going to be a cinch. I knew that we were going to start getting ready for extubation. Let's get that tube out of his throat so he can start breathing on his own again. But just about the time that I was figuring that I could get the attending back in the room to extubate, I noticed something. My patient was no longer Bucky or fighting the vent anymore. He was really calm. I can remember that fear that just gripped me. I knew something was wrong. I got closer to my patient to assess him and noticed he was almost a little bit too peaceful. He was no longer bucking the vent and he wouldn't even open his eyes when I said his name or when I squeezed his arm. Something was definitely going wrong. And it was out of the corner of my eye that I noticed a small bag dripping. And I thought to myself, everything's off. There's nothing that should be dripping. I looked up, reached up, and found an empty bag of regular insulin. Realizing that I had just bolused my patient 100 units of regular insulin. And this was a patient that had been in surgery for the last six hours and, and PO since the night before. He had no source of glucose and... I knew that he was dangerously hypoglycemic, and I worried that he was life-threateningly hypoglycemic. Oh, man. What had gone wrong? How did I just bolus my patient 100 mils, 100 units of regular insulin? I mean, when we catch a high blood sugar, we often start with just one unit of insulin and go up on a sliding scale. I had just given my patient 100 times that amount, and he definitely didn't need it. My thoughts were racing, and one of them was, how did I do this? I followed the line down from the drip chamber and noticed the safety clamp hadn't engaged when I pulled the line from the pump. I followed it closer to the patient's central line. The roller clamp wasn't closed, and... Most devastatingly, the lines were all still attached to the manifold from surgery. That's what was it. I I mean, my grave mistake. I hadn't detached the line from my patient before taking it out of the pump. That is how I bolused my patient an entire bag of regular insulin right after surgery. In the end, it took an entire team to help me save this patient from my mistake. We ended up pushing five ampules of D50. I had to call for help and 
tell the attending that this fresh post-op might start coding. Eventually, we had to also call on respiratory therapy to ensure the settings were changed on the ventilator since he was losing consciousness. Thankfully, the patient lived. And I ended the shift crying, cry-hugging his wife and apologizing profusely for almost killing her husband. In the days after this scary event, I spent hours and hours thinking about what I had done, trying to figure out exactly where I had gone wrong because even though I knew my ABCs and I had prioritized like I was supposed to, there was definitely something that I had missed. Eventually, I realized that I had overlooked a very important part of my ABCs. It wasn't the A for airway, the B for breathing, or the C for circulation. So what was left? What had I missed? I knew my patient had an airway. He was still intubated from surgery and he was breathing virtually on his own. Respiratory therapy had come in and adjusted the settings because he was bucking the vent. He was having trouble with all of that support as he was waking up from anesthesia. And of course, circulation was intact because I felt his pulse. His color was great. He was nice and warm to the touch. The monitor told me that his heart rate was great. His blood pressures were there. So I knew that circulation was effective and intact. How had I missed this very important thing that turned this into a life-threatening situation. Come to find out, what I violated was safety. That small little S at the end of my ABCs. S for safety. Now I want to point out that often in nursing, airway, breathing, and circulation are typically covered by the time the patient reaches your care as a bedside nurse. That's where the little S for safety isn't so little anymore. In fact, safety is actually a large piece of prioritization and an umbrella that covers so many nursing interventions. And for that reason, your NCLEX is going to focus on it a lot. In fact, safety and infection control is one of the top four categories covered on your NCLEX. It can account for up to 16% of your test. Again, not so little anymore, safety. With safety, we must consider the environment, the immediate surroundings, and also very importantly, pharmacology. Additionally, safety and infection control are major focuses of patient care standards in any nursing position. So, with my post-op patient, their safety had been violated. In my excitement, I had started to take the necessary steps to transition my patient from surgery to recovery. I started clearing the lines from the pumps before I disconnected them from his central line. Doing so opened the possibility for any or all of the medications from the pumps to free flow into his body at a completely unregulated rate. In reality, what I had done was instead of focusing on what was happening with my patient, I was worrying about getting the room cleaned up. I was checking boxes, completing tasks, not prioritizing properly. What I should have done was first roller clamp each line. Then I could have safely disconnected the manifold from my patient's central line. Flushing, locking, and capping the central line would have then ensured that my patient's central access was secure and sterile. Only after all of that would it have been appropriate and safe for me to remove the IV lines from the channels and clear out the pumps. Now this important rule for safety won't ever be missed again. With practice, the nursing ABCs became a reflex for me. As a nurse, I am constantly mentally running through airway, breathing, circulation, and now 
from all of this safety. And again, most of my time and interventions are centered on safety. It's a broad umbrella that covers so many nursing interventions. My safety violation was not only a major med error, but will send my patient an entire bag of regular insulin. But it also launched me backwards in the ABCs, from safety to breathing. Like I said, as a nurse, I am constantly running through the ABCs in order and checking them off. But as my story shows, you can be launched backward in your checklist of prioritization at any moment. If you treat safety as a one-time checklisted item, you will fail as a nurse. What I take away from this is, one, ABCs are priorities, not checklists. Mentally checking off one of your ABCs does not mean it's done. ABCs are never done. Anytime the airway is obstructed, it always becomes your number one again. Number two, don't be complacent about the S for safety. Be vigilant. Do not forget safety with your patients. Number three, ask for help as soon as possible. I should have asked for help sooner because I know in this moment, I wasted valuable time panicking and problem solving when interventions to correct the situation could have happened earlier. But man, am I so glad that I asked for help. Violating the safety of my patient almost led to his death. And now I tell this story every chance I get. Maybe it'll help you. And I know that it will help me never forget and become complacent with safety again. Hopefully you've learned from my valuable lesson. I sure have. And with that, I encourage you to go out and be your best self today. And as always, happy nursing.